Today we're going to be taking a look at the 35 perks that Gleaner Heights has to offer. With the first group here being hardy, because nothing says determination and concentration like a unibrow and a lifeless stare. But as you can imagine, it increases your stamina. You can endure more exertion. What is your secret? A healthy breakfast? A different outlook on life? A gain level? Who knows? Max stamina increased by 10 points. And each level of hardy after that adds another 10 points. Which would be extremely useful because, yeah, if you've been watching any of the Let's Plays going on right now, you know that stamina drains like a mofo. So the next one we have here is Vigorous. Aw, he's so happy. Offering his heart out to people like that. It's more difficult for you to catch the common cold. Your max health is increased by 10 points. Man, I hope the cold is not in this game. Although, I would not be surprised. And just like with Hardy, each continuous level after that adds another 10 points to your health. The next one we have here is Dash Attack. Requires Fighting 3. Attacking with an axe, hammer, hoe, or sickle while running will cause you to perform a dash attack. Stylish. And then we have Ground Slam, which sounds pretty fucking awesome, I'm just gonna say. It requires Fighting 6. Attacking with an axe, hammer, hoe, or sickle while doing a dash attack will cause you to do a 360 degree jump spin and come down crashing, damaging everything around you. That sounds pretty badass. I'm excited to get my hands on that one. And then there's Deep Treasure. Requires Fishing 6. I said that word. Deep Treasure? When fishing, you will occasionally catch something unexpectedly valuable. I'm really curious to see how the fishing mechanic works on this because it's a if it's anything like Stardew Valley, it's going to be frustrating at first for me because I had some difficulties. Although it will be a lot better with a controller, I think. And then thick skinned. If you weren't a human, you'd be a hippopotamus. Which, okay, alright. I suppose. <laughs> if you're going to be anything other than a human, why not a hippopotamus? Your protection is increased by 10. And every subsequent level after that, oh, there's only two, one more. Stone Sense requires mining five. All these hours spent underground have given you mole-like qualities. You can sense the approximate location of a mine's ladder to the next level. That might be useful. I'm interested to see how that would work, like, in-game. Obviously, like, is it going to be like a little, like a boop, 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 boop? <laughs> like, you get closer to it, you know? And that sound effect, exactly. Uh, you know, I, I did the voice work for the game, so, you know. <laughs> anyway, the next one is Mine Cleave, requires mining three. You break mine walls so brutally that nearby walls can't stand it. Every time you break a mine wall, there's a 20% chance an adjacent wall, not diagonally, will break too. I'm always worried when I'm mining that the whole thing is going to come crashing down on me. Like, I know that that's probably not going to happen. But still, it's in the back of my mind. Like, I'm going to hit a wrong stone and it's all going to come crashing down and I will die a terrible, lonely death. And then there's Trojan Horse. You know how to gift them. You know how to please them. The second gift given to the same villager within a day has its effectiveness reduced by 20% instead of the normal 50%. Because people don't like to receive the same thing over and over again. It's kind of creepy. It's like, here, you will take my rock and you will like it. Nobody's liked my rock yet. They think it's kind of lame. And then there's animal rigging. Requires husbandry three. Even you can't explain how it works, but it does. Given a sick animal food from a recipe containing at least three ingredients can heal it. Goodbye, medicine. Hello, homeopathic healing. Crop jackpot. Requires farming nine. These crops just keep coming. Each time you pick up a crop in your farm, there's a 10% chance you can pick another one from the same plant. That's useful, although I don't know how long it'll take to get to farming nine. That seems like quite the task. Although if you're doing it every day, it shouldn't take that long to get there. And then there's crop resilience requiring farming six. Your crops just don't know how to quit. On the first day of a season, off-season crops have a 50% chance to yield fruit one last time. How nice, they're like, I'm gonna do this for you, man. Eat my fruits, love them. Hoarder, which is, you know, pretty basic. You need more space for your stuff, obviously. You gain two additional inventory slots for your items and tools. Isn't that kind of enabling? Night vision, you have cat-like qualities, and while you don't wear leather tights or brandish a whip, aw, you can see better in the dark. 
I was really hoping for the leather tights and the web. Like, I'm not going to lie. I think it'd look pretty hot, but, you know, whatever. Take what I can get, I guess. Insulated. There is no such hang as too hot or too cold for you. You are immune to all negative weather effects. All right. Is there too hot or too cold? Interesting. I mean, I guess. Maybe it drains your stamina. That would be an interesting concept. But moving on, we have crops for hot too. <laughs> That's nice. Eating a raw crop will restore health equal to 50% of what stamina it restores. Okay. Is that on top of the stamina that it restores? I'd be curious to find that out. Unstoppable. Nothing can slow you down. Not spider webs, not even the heaviest of armors. Night visitor, you are welcome at the oddest of hours. The time most houses close for the night is pushed further by two hours. That sounds a bit suspicious. Like if people just, they're like, oh, well, normally I'd be going to bed, but I'm just going to leave this door unlocked for you just in case. Chef, you gain knowledge of 10 simple cooking recipes. All right, we've got Chef 2 and Chef 3. So yeah, you could end up learning like 30 recipes just by picking perks. Stamina Thief requires fighting nine. Is it the result of a sh a schadenfreude <laughs> or intense meditation skills? Each enemy you defeat slightly restores your stamina. All right, well, I'm really curious what a schadenfreude is. I'll have to look that up as soon as I'm done recording this, but I'm sure that you guys will let me know. Relativistic Fishix requires fishing three. All right, well, this is getting like interesting. You experience time dilation when a fish bites, increasing your time to react by 30%. Okay, so I'm assuming that the mechanic for the fishing is going to be quite similar to Stardew Valley, but we'll have to see. Animal buddy, no animal will attack you unless aggravated. Be warned though, not all enemies are animals, but the cutesy little porcupines will leave you the fuck alone, which is really, I don't wanna kill them, they're adorable. But yeah, you come trying to poke me with shit, I'm gonna kill ya. Gatherer, like the first humans, you make the most of your foraging. You can pick twice the amount of seasonal items like mushrooms and apples. Nemo, <laughs> you have sailor blood running in your veins. Sailing speed is increased by 50% and your oxygen, your oxygen, your oxygen capacity is also increased by 50%. Uh, yeah, that, okay. Yeah, I really want to see, um, the deep sea diving. Like, how exciting is that? Rambo. All right, so it is a Rambo band and I feel a lot better about that. It's a matter of style and Western propaganda. Wearing any headband increases your protection by three and your damage by 10%. Nice. Animal pull requires husbandry six. When you will it, animals simply gravitate towards you. The speed with which you lead an animal is doubled. That'd be really useful because in a lot of games, animals are a pain in the ass to move. Animal cult requires husbandry nine. No domesticated animal can resist your charm. Affection given to animals is increased by 30% noise. Crop protection requires farming three. Your crops are much less likely to be damaged by extreme weather and just planted crops are less likely to be washed away by rain, which is really interesting because yeah, I mean, if you did just, you know, throw some seeds on the ground, which we seem to be doing, we're just like, ha, hey, whatever, it'll grow. And then you got a heavy rain, of course, it's going to wash away. So interesting concept here. And that is the final of the 35 perks. So let me know down in the comments which perks you're most excited for, which ones you think are okay, but you're gonna get anyway. And if you enjoyed this video, which I know you did, I know you did, don't lie, then give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And gonna be lots of content. We're gonna dig deeper into Gleaner Heights and see what kind of mysteries we can unveil. Thanks for watching, guys.